We hello YouTubers and thank you, thank you for watching this amazing, most audacious and incredible YouTube video. So I've been reading several people's blogs about David Eichel and watching several videos about it too and I've seen his The People's Voice YouTube channel uh, where he for some bizarre reason, I'm not sure if it's because of a, well, can I actually say this, uh, promotion idea to delete all his videos and then say somebody's hacked his site you know right okay somebody has hacked the site uh, you know the fbi the cia whoever you're dealing with here has decided we must hack david Eckel's site because he is uncovering some very delicate secrets here uh, i'm sure the Aliens from Mars are really threat. Well, the aliens from the Moon are really threatened by the People's Voice uh, YouTube channel, where you're talking about uh, the Queen and the rest of them being lizards. And indeed, they do actually look like lizards, and they are. Uh, well, I, I can't really say it, but they are scum. I have to say, you know, Prince. Philip is a scumbag when he said to people, I want to be brought back as a killer virus. But, uh, you know, I'm sure these people here, well, those lizards, as you say, are really threatened by this and decided that they must hack your YouTube channel and your um, own, what do you call that now, site at the same time, of course, and delete all your videos and also cause problems on your own site. That doesn't make any sense, mate. You're lying there. I mean, I can see BS from a mile away, and I, you know, this nose is incredible. It can smell BS from miles and miles away. Now, I came across David Ickle many, many moons ago. Many moons ago. I was watching him, and I saw something about him on Teddy Wogan, and people were taking it this out of him back then because uh, they said, I mean, he didn't actually say this, but they said he was saying he was the son of God. I then went back and watched the video that Tay Wogan was taking the piss, and Tay Wogan did actually say sorry later, but it was edited in such a way that people assumed that he was saying he was the son of God. I never actually heard him once say he was the son of God, ever. Ever. I never heard David Eccles saying he was the son of God. In fact, I've yet to come across a single video where he did, or does, uh, because when I was watching that video, he was talking in a sort of metaphoric sort of way. It, I mean, I can sense that from a mile away, and people were thinking, oh, he's really saying that. Some people thought it was just a con man, which is probably more true. Uh, but I never actually saw that, and then I saw another video. I, I even thought this before watching that video, because I mentioned it on, uh, I think it was Thomas Sheldon's site. I said that he's not really saying he's the Son of God at all. He never actually says it in the video. He never says it to Terry Wogan. And then he goes on another chat, another show after me mentioned this. Uh, well, no, it was well before. But uh, I looked at it and I wanted to see more about it to see if he actually ever did say he was the son of Jesus Christ. And then somebody in the audience, some clever woman said, Are you saying, just answer me this question, that you are the son of God? I want a pure answer. I don't want any BS here, no metaphoric uh, you know, type of wording. Just say are you the son of God? And he answered, no. So he never actually meant it in that way. And I don't think he ever means it in anything other than a metaphoric way. Uh, he does know that there's evil in the world, and I appreciate that. But David Ickle uh, has my attention at the moment, because I've been looking at several things he's been doing, and uh, some of it's pretty good. He, he confuses the hell out of me, to be honest. Uh, you see some videos where he's talking about how they manipulate things to go to war with certain countries for various reasons. They cause uh, the media to do this, to change people's uh, perceptions. And he's right, he does sound like a very intelligent person when he's like that. In fact, he is probably a very intelligent person. But there's something about him where he just goes off his pot. And he, his words can always be twisted against him. And that's what I've noticed, you know, when he says the Queen is a lizard. I, I say the Queen is a lizard, but 
I mean it in a metaphoric way. I mean it in a personality way. You know, she might as well be from the planet Morongo, for I care. That's what I think of it. I think the, the royals are complete uh, nutcases, really. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean I believe they're alien. I just consider them alien in a way. <laughs> uh, so I agree with them. They are lizards. But uh, when he's saying it... Uh, the media twists it automatically as if it's making him out to be the moron and the insane person. And they can easily do this. In fact, uh, because he keeps on doing it without actually realising what he is doing, you know, saying the moon is uh, a giant spaceship <laughs> and Jupiter is the base of all this operation of the lizard race, he has taken the mickey. You know, he has taken the this really. And it, it can easily be, it can easily have that twisted against him. So what I don't understand is, you know, if he's such a big, f well, he thinks he's a big threat to the, the the structure of civilization. You know, the structure of these psychopaths in charge, these lizards or the royal family. In fact, when they see that channel go up and them talking a lot of nonsense like that, they're probably really happy about it. In fact, they probably sent over a bit of money to them themselves, saying, you know, go start it up. Go on, self-destruct. <laughs> you talk about a lot of rubbish, we'll let you do it. In fact, why not cut, say, that Uranus is full of butter moon people, you know, the, the, the strange creatures on uh, Uranus. You know, they crawl out of holes, etc. You, know, you talk about that. Talk, they crawl out of hat, cracks and holes and they're strange creatures so you never actually see them. You know, you can talk about all sorts of things like that. The, the royal family and all that are probably laughing their bloody head off about it. They, they're not feeling threatened by anything that David Hickel is doing. Um, if I was a devious psychopath, right... If I was a real devious psychopath and I wanted things to be kept secret, you know, real secrets, you know, they, the fact that they are poisonous for our diet, etc. If I saw David Eckel, I'd be rubbing my hands together because he is sending people over to his side and he's talking about the most rubbish things half the time. And, uh, you know, sometimes he talks about sensible things, but most of the time, He's um, he's got this sort of quirkness in his personality where where he starts talking in metaphoric rhymes, and uh, I think he does mean it in a metaphoric way, by the way, uh, because it's very difficult. Not everybody can sense a metaphor, so to speak. Not everybody looks at something and can see a metaphor. When I heard that, that he was saying he was Jesus Christ or whatever, I looked at it and I realised he was talking metaphorically. He he was talking about you know he is the Oh, the mindset of Jesus, you know, to bring hope to the world, etc. Uh, and he was probably being a bit cocky with it as well. But he never actually meant it in the way where you think, where he's saying, oh, I'm Jesus Christ, I was nailed to a cross and I died and what whatsoever. He was just saying, you know, you believe whatever you want. And I actually appreciate him when he did that. In fact, he seemed more sane in the Terry Wogan video than he does now. <laughs> so they're probably just saying, you know, you can go ahead. In fact, if the CIA, CIA were around and they were trying to keep secrets and they saw that and they say, oh, everybody's going there to look at the secrets that we're keeping. You know, let's fund them because he's doing us a favour. <laughs> he's, he's, he's actually doing us a favour there. We don't have to, you know, advertise a lot of rubbish. We'll just let David Ickle do it. We'll give him a couple of grand and he'll do the job for us. Uh, because David Ickle is not a saviour. <laughs> he just isn't. Um, I appreciate his work. He does have some good ideas and some of the things he does say are interesting. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to analyse him because he's, um, this, he's like a moving target actually, which is good. He just, being a moving target in personality is good. Having many different personas, uh, as in acting, I don't mean in the psychopathic sense, but, you know, being a king and a joker and a scribe, etc., is a good thing because you're a moving target. Not many people can understand what your next move is if you're a moving target. So, you've got to be a moving target. You do. If you're not a moving target, then people can predict you and they can say, well, we've got to stop that right now. Yeah. Or they can look at you and say, oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's fine. But if you're a moving target, you can really knife 
the psychopaths in charge in the back in the most hilarious ways. So if I was ever on TV and, uh, you know, it was on the BBC, I'll be trying to wake up the sheeple stra straight away. <laughs> say, you, thought you, were, you thought you were inviting me here to talk about, you know, sweets being good for you, but I'm going to say that saturated fats are good for you, that we should eat like our ancestors, uh, and we shouldn't uh, be having this Harry Potter diet, you know, M&M diet or Smarty diet, uh, Coca-Cola diet, whatever you call it. So I'll, I'll be literally taking a piss immediately, uh, but David Eckel, he's a strange character. He is a strange character. I don't understand him completely. I don't know where he's coming from. I, He's very difficult to predict, and it's more like in a psychotic sort of way. Uh, but I don't believe he's psychotic. I believe he is a clever con man. That's what I think he is. And uh, what really shows this to be true is him constantly saying, we are running out of money. Have you ever noticed that? Now, I was watching um, one of, well, I wasn't watching, I was listening to one of Thomas Sheridan's, so what he actually thought of it. And uh, I also read some of his um, blog and also on his Facebook page where he said he doesn't actually understand where David Eccles is coming from. He, he's, he's like a, a very odd character in a way. He doesn't actually mean odd in that way. He just means he just can't work him out. There's something not quite right there. And I agree with him. Uh, but I think Thomas Sheridan is actually missing the whole point, and I'll be honest there, because uh, uh, you know I don't I don't rub people up the ass if I don't need to. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas, I'm not, I, I don't take the piss out of people. I don't deserve it either. You know you have to do something against me, and so I'm not taking the piss out of Thomas Sheridan. You know he, he's a sir. You know he, he's a a fur a sir that he was knighted by the King of Scribes, which is. It, it's better than being knighted by Her Majesty, who uh, is also got the same. <laughs> you notice the knighthoods of the Queen is very similar to the sexual fence <laughs> register. <laughs> it's really pretty similar. Uh, so a King's Scribe knighthood is fought after. It really is fought after. So if you got that, you're doing very well. Anyhow, uh, I, I think. Uh, when I was actually reading the post that Thomas said, <laughs> right, if we can ever say the words right, um, I disagreed. I, I disagreed on what he was thinking. I'm not sure how I can actually put that in words because he was writing this, but the, what, what he was feeling was completely different from what I could sense from his writing. And he he was saying, you know, he's a good man, etc. Yeah. Fair enough, he's a good man. He probably is. He probably isn't a bad man at all. But just because somebody is not a bad person, won't, won't go around hurting people, won't go around bullying others, doesn't mean that they can't be a con artist. It does not mean that they cannot be a con artist if money's involved. And from what I can see there, there's some gaslighting going on with uh, David Eccles' page. And I was looking at it, and you know, people were saying, "Oh, we're going to be running out of money. The world is going to end if we don't have money." And that's what they were actually saying on the site. You know, we're running out of money. Save the planet. We need this money coming into the people's voice. And I was absolutely shocked from what I was reading on this site because that is what they're writing. They're saying we need money because we must save this so we can save the bloody world. <laughs> I mean, you guys are going to save the world, are you? Who's the threat to the world? <laughs> no. who, is a, who exactly is a threat to the world? Be honest there, who is it? I don't see anybody as a threat to the world. As uh, one psychopath said, the world is too big. Uh, you know, even Hitler couldn't manage it. The world is just too big. Um, there's too much corporate interest to threaten the whole world. Uh, they're not really interested in threatening the whole world because they want to keep some places safe for, safe for themselves. So the world is pretty safe. It's us who are fact. That's what I remember somebody saying, a really brilliant uh, comedian once said, the world isn't in trouble, it's us who are fact. Alright? <laughs> That's the big difference. Uh, but some of the comments I've been say seeing on those sites are bizarre. And obviously, it's part of him doing that sort of thing. He's 
begging for money every single week and saying we really need this, you know, it's probably just going into his bank account. <laughs> 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 if you if you people are sheeple enough and sleeple enough uh, to <laughs> fall for that scam, he's a con artist, guys. You know, what does he actually say anyway? He makes some really decent videos now and again. And he says some very interesting points now and again that we already know of. We know about these ideas. And sometimes he might say things that uh, I haven't thought of before. But, on the whole, he doesn't really say anything. He is just somebody who's blabbering on and on and on. He may as well be another Russell Brand. Uh, who I call Russell Bland. <laughs> he may as well be Russell Bland. Perhaps they can get a chat show together or something and, uh, you know, talk about nothing. You know, we should really be concentrating on diet, on the problem with our farming, etc., supporting your local farmer because that's where the workforce actually comes from. Uh, you, vote, you vote with your wallet, guys. You know, if you send that money to corporate farmers, etc., you're voting for them. If you spend your money on organic farmland, uh, where it's proven, certified, you're voting for that. And I do agree with certain people on the side that we should be kind to animals. And listen here, you know, I, I, I will admit this, when I, when I was young and I first saw, you know, the chickens lined up with their heads upside down and, uh, <laughs> A pig razor cutting off the chicken's heads like one after another. I did laugh my head off at first, but uh, that's just because it was a bit of a divvy. I mean, I was just taking the piss there. Uh, but I don't think they should be burnt alive, etc. I think they should be de they should be killed quick. I think that's a really good way of killing them. Bang, 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 it's over with. You, they shouldn't be tortured. Uh, but they should also live a fairly decent lifestyle too. You know, if they go out in their sunlight and they're not surroundings. Why, why do they need to be in a very small uh, confined space anyway? When there's fields upon fields to go out in. I don't understand that. Why do they have to be contained in such a small space? They, they don't really need that much space anyway. You know, uh, just a couple of like 10 miles to sort out the whole of Britain, eggs, etc. is all you need. Uh, but they, they crush them into a very tiny space. And I don't really get that because, you know, when they do that and the, the chickens become ill, the nutrition value in the eggs and the meat become a problem. Do you know that? You know, if, you, if you're not actually eating organic food, organic eggs where they're being reared on a organic land where they're roaming about free, even if it's not organic, where they're allowed to go out and they're not you know, diseased and cuddled up and they can't even walk, that you're eating healthier food. If you eat something that's full of toxins, where they have to pump it f with uh, chemicals and, uh, what do you call it, steroids, etc., and hormones, it's going to affect you in the long run too, because that food then goes into your body, and your liver has to sort it out, and then it goes into you. And that's what people don't understand. So, if you want to get healthy, etc., you've got to eat healthy animals. Uh, now, I know that animals eat other animals that are sick or injured, but it doesn't necessarily mean really, really sick. You know, disease like these, because they can't move about. The lions have to chase the whatever they've eaten. It might just be that that animal has a sore leg or something, but they have to chase it. They are healthy enough. But when you eat a really sick an animal that's really full of these hormones and these steroids and antibiotics, it's going into your body. And they're not getting the nutritional value from the food they eat. They're eating sewage, etc. So when you eat that, you're basically eating a chicken that's been reared of chicken shit. That's what you're eating, which is why you feel bad and why, uh, you know, the vegetarian diet might seem better. And also about that, let me just cover this. I'm going off topic here, but, you know, I had an argument with somebody a while ago. It's not an argument, a discussion on Thomas Sheridan's site. And it's nothing to do with Thomas, by the way, so I'm not talking about him. It was somebody on his, his Facebook page. And they were saying, you know, we must eat vegetarian because we don't have the teeth uh, to eat animals, etc. What they forget is that the human is a scavenger 
really, in a biological terms. We find food and then we eat it, whether it is animal or plant. And if you are white skinned, you are a protein fat type. You, you're not. You're not a vegetarian. You know your ancestors, for thousands upon thousands of years, weren't eating uh, bananas and tomatoes in winter. <laughs> what do you think they were eating? You know, if you're white skinned, you've obviously been living in this northern part, and for six months you'll have no food at all because the land will be frozen. So you have to eat the animals, and that's what they used to eat. And if the land's frozen, the the animals are going to be frozen too. So you've got a refrigerator there already. <laughs> so, you know, you, it's uh, hard to explain with some of these people, but uh, our biology has completely changed. You know, we obviously we might have been at one point eating um, fruit and vegetables uh, if we were living in the equator, but we're no longer doing that. We haven't done that for hundreds of thousands of years. So our, our genetic code is determined on where we live. It's called metabolic typing. So if you live north, you should be eating animal products. Not necessarily beef, etc., but you should be eating that. And, uh, you know, have you ever seen, what, if we are meant for eating, you know, grass, etc., why aren't we on all falls? <laughs> I'm just saying it. We're more like a monkey than anything, and monkeys eat both animals and also plants. But also, you know, if you go back in time long enough, believe it or not, we are more programmed to eat insects. <laughs> I won't go on there, but I'm just saying that's uh, really what we should be eating. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to eat that because it's disgusting. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. I've been talking a lot of crap over the last few minutes, but I thought it might be interesting for you to know. I want to see people talking about more relevant things. Uh, so if you want to see something interesting, have a look at Thomas Sheridan's site, etc. He does some really interesting stuff. Uh, there's a few other people out there who do other good stuff there. Uh, Paul Check is another person you should check out. Underground Wellness is a, a thing, a place you should check. There's all sorts of things and decent people doing good things for our world, you know, to make it less psychopathic. And you do vote with your wallet. So if you're sending your money over to David Ackle instead of your organic farmer, you, you're just sponsoring another nutcase as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.